Hi everyone. Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about yeast, the good variety, the stuff that we make wine from. And the reason for making this video is because I've never really got to grips with exactly how I should be pitching the yeast into the grape juice. I've always been a sprinkler before, but I've been told that I really should be a rehydrator. So in this video, I'm going to basically be educating myself. And if you find it useful along the way, then that's a bonus as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so what we're going to be using is some mineral water. And the reason why you want to use mineral water is because tap water is probably chlorinated. Um, you don't want chlorine in uh, any water that you're going to incubate yeast in because the chlorine itself can kill or at least interfere with how well that yeast develops. So always use mineral water. Uh, clearly, if you're just going to sprinkle yeast onto grape juice, then that doesn't have any chlorine in any way, so you don't have to worry about it there. But um, we're going to be using Brecon spring water. Now, Brecon's a region uh, in the Welsh hills, not far away from where we live. So um, I've got every confidence it's going to be gorgeous uh, for yeast anyway. So um, let's um, try with that. Uh, the other thing I've got is a, an accurate uh, measuring uh, cylinder or um, cup I suppose I can measure out exactly how much water I'm going to be using. Um, I've also got some containers, I've also got my GoFirm which is in a sachet here. I'm going to have to get my glasses on to actually read um, what they recommend but we'll come on to that in a second. This is a two ounce sachet of GoFirm. Um, I've also got my yeast. Now the yeast I'm going to be using is the yeast I've always used uh, to varying success to be honest. I found it difficult to get started which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video. It's the Lalvin 41B strain of yeast. So um, I'll measure some of that out as well. I've got some accurate scales and I've got one of those laser thermometers. So those are the um, pieces of equipment that I'm using to, uh, to do all of this. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting quite excited about this because I have no idea whether this is going to work or not. Right, so let's get going. I'm going to do the go firm rehydrating method first and then I'll do the sprinkle method last. So basically what I'm going to be doing is follow the instructions which are on the go firm packet, um, but you can also find the instructions on websites like um, Scott Labs which also sell uh, go firm and I dare say there's loads of other websites as well. But essentially the ratios that we're really concerned about is how much go firm we are using compared to the yeast that we're going to be adding. Now it's roughly speaking one part yeast to one point two five parts go firm so I can measure that out on the scales fairly easily and the other th uh, ratio that we're interested in is how much water we're going to be adding and depending on which site you go with although on this one and Scott Labs it says 20 to 1 so 20 parts water to one part um, go firm so if I just make the sums easy really if I'm using one gram of go firm I'm using 20 mils of water and 1.25 grams of no, I'm not. Start that again. I'm doing 1.25 grams of go firm, one gram of yeast and 20 mils of water. And I can pro rata that up uh, to make it uh, more meaningful. So uh, first things first, I'm going to um, get some water. I'm going to heat this up to about 45 degrees. That's a little bit too warm, to be honest, but um, at least I can get it to cool down uh, relatively quickly to the right temperature, which they say is about 43 degrees for dissolving or mixing in the go firm and then letting that cool down to about 40 degrees before I add the yeast. And I dare say the difference between 43 and 40 degrees is not going to take too long to do. But um, anyway, I'm just going to uh, heat some of my mineral water up to the right temperature. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. I've weighed out accurately 100 mils of water. It's the right temperature. And so working backwards, if I've got 100 mils of water, I'm gonna be roughly needing five grams of GoFirm. So I'm just gonna weigh that out now. Now, all we've got to do now is add the yeast. So if we did five grams of go firm, we're going to add four grams of yeast. That's our one to 1.25 ratio. So um, yeah, all I'm going to do is just weigh out four grams of yeast. Okay, so that's my yeast added. It's just sitting on the surface and I'm just going to leave it now for, what, 10 minutes or so? I'll put the time lapse on it just to sort of see if anything at all happens. Uh, you never know, something might do, it might not. But um, anyway, I'm just going to leave it now and uh, come back in 10 minutes. Thank you. 
So I hope I've done that okay. Essentially, uh, it seems to have woken up and according to the instructions on the Lalvin um, packet here, uh, so long as you just let this cool down to within 10 degrees of the must that you're adding it to, then you're not going to introduce some kind of thermal shock to the yeast and completely stop it dead. So I think all you really need to do now is just to cool this down to, I don't know, 20 degrees, room temperature, something like that. And then you can add it to the must so long as the must is 10 degrees within room temperature. So I think that's okay. I'm not exactly sure to be honest, but I think that's okay. And if I'm not doing it right, then definitely put it in the comments below. It seems to have worked. It's bubbling away or it was bubbling away. I could add a little bit of um, dextrose, I suppose, just to replicate a bit of sugar and just see how that works. Uh, so I don't know, I'll see how it goes. Anyway, um, that's that. Now, the next thing is to test it in comparison with just using the sprinkle method. And that's what I'm gonna do now. In theory, I'm going to just try this to be honest, if I take 100 mils of water and add it to uh, 20 grams of sugar, then that should be 20 bricks, shouldn't it? I don't know. We'll give it a go. Let's try it. Okay, there we go. That's my 20 grams of sugar. I've got 100 mils of water, so I'm just going to add it. This is where I need a wine calculator, isn't it? Because it actually comes out at 1.06. So it's not quite uh, 1.08, but actually 1.06 is not far off what my Orion grapes were this year. So um, I'm just going to add a little bit more sugar. It can't hurt, can it? It'd be nice to actually get a hydrometer reading of 1.08, and then that will probably give us a more realistic figure as to what uh, proper um, grape must is, uh, is at where, but, you know, before we add the yeast. So uh, let me just uh, add a little bit more, and we'll, we should get to 1.08 in a second. Right, I'll spin you around on that and we should find we're about spot on now. Okay, that is about spot on. It's just a whisker under 1.08, but you know, we're not gonna worry about that. Uh, so we shall use that solution. So to replicate sort of the environment where um, we're just gonna sprinkle yeast on top, we're not gonna heat it up at all. It's just going to be room temperature or about about 18, 20 degrees centigrade, what if that is in Fahrenheit? That's just going to replicate our must solution uh, when we come to add the yeast. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add yeast and just leave it. And I'll put it on time-lapse just as I did before and we'll see how that gets on. There we go, that should do it. Now it does look like I'm adding quite a lot of yeast here, but it's only because the surface area is quite small. Anyway, the yeast sank to the bottom just like it did before and I thought I'll wait about half an hour uh, just to sort of see if anything happened at all. And I got quite despondent after half an hour because absolutely nothing happened at all. So I thought, OK, not to worry, I'll just leave it overnight and just sort of see if anything happens at all. And sure enough, I came back in the morning and we had loads of bubbles on the surface. Now don't get me wrong, we haven't got loads of bubbles, but so long as the yeast is alive, we should be able to get all that sugar converted to alcohol given time. So the sprinkle method does seem to take a much, much longer time, 24 hours in our case, before we sort of see any evidence of bubbles on the surface. It means the ye yeast is um, eventually waking up, but it's taking a lot longer. So I don't know, I've used the sprinkle method in the past, but it looks like the rehydrating method using the GoFirm as a nutrient uh, works uh, very, very quickly indeed. So I'll probably be using that method in future. Now, there is one extra thing I wanted to try, and that is to use exactly the same sugary solution that I used just now, but uh, actually use a different yeast. And this time I'm going to be using the yeast from Young's, which is I think a UK company, but I'm pretty sure they probably ship you know, worldwide, instead of the Lalvin 41B. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, add the yeast, put that on time lapse and just see if that works any better.
Wow, so adding some general purpose yeast to some sugary water, leave it 10 minutes and bang, off it goes. It's quite incredible really, but it's not to everyone's taste because general purpose yeast doesn't come with a particularly well-known taste profile. Unlike things like Lalvin 71B, not quite sure what was wrong with 71A by the way, but a specialist yeast gives a much more defined um, taste profile for the finished product. And if you're going to get you know, fussy about wine, and let's face it, why shouldn't you, then go for a specialist yeast. But if you're doing that, then it looks like you have to rehydrate the yeast beforehand using something like Go Firm as a nutrient to really get it kick-started. And, uh, but if you're not that fussed really, and you just want to convert um, your grape must into alcohol, then general purpose yeast work absolutely fine just by sprinkling it on top. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, interesting or useful. I've certainly found it um, useful just going through the exercise of uh, determining what I should be doing in the future. Uh, a massive thank you to my patrons as well that really help the channel out. And if you want some more background information, fact sheets and videos and things like that, then maybe I'll meet you over there. If you're interested in seeing how we started our red wine this year, then check out this video here and hopefully you'll enjoy that one too. But anyway, I hope to catch you in the next video. But until then, bye for now.